Hey everyone, welcome to the Industry Show. I'm your host Nitin Bajaj, and joining me today is Raj Joshi. Raj, welcome on the show. Well, thank you, Nitin. Appreciate the invite. Glad to be here. Pleasure is all ours. So let's get started with who is Raj. Okay, so uh, you know it's hard to separate the personal from the professional, but. Sure. Uh, if I focus on one word that describes me, I will use the word reinvent. Mm -hmm. uh, just looking at my professional career and my personal growth, um, I have felt that it's important to reinvent, uh, to uh, generate joyful personal experiences on the personal side. And uh, on the professional side, uh, side uh, if you reinvent yourself, uh, you stay relevant and you create new paths. And uh, when I look back at my professional uh, growth, uh, starting with my days at Deloitte Consulting, mm -hmm. uh, Infosys Consulting, and now Moodle, I have uh, had to change my stripes multiple times uh, by reinventing. And it, it was not a conscious plan, so to speak. It just has happened. And just looking back, I can say that uh, focusing on reinventing myself has helped me both on the personal side and the professional side. And would love to learn more about that because, you know, all of these three are very different, right? From a from a consulting to IT services and and software, and now to a startup, these take very different mindsets and skills. So would love to learn about that. So tell us what is Noodle.ai. Sure. So. Uh, um... Uh, my co-founder and I launched the company now five and a half years ago in the Bay Area, uh, the, you know, the place where a lot of uh, great startups have, uh, have been launched. But um, uh, Noodle AI is an enterprise AI uh, company. Um, we uh, have developed machine learning powered applications for supply chain. Mm -hmm. It's been quite a journey, uh, lots of uh, ups and downs, but fundamentally uh, we are on the uh, really cutting edge of technology to solve business problems uh, that are significant. And um, uh, what we have found is that AI is a, actually able to uh, provide a value to customers in a way that current technology or existing technology can't. So it's very, very exciting. How did Noodle come about? I mean, you, you're you at Deloitte, then you're at Infosys, and then, you know, other places. And what led to the creation of Noodle? Yeah. So five years ago, actually more than five years ago, six, seven years ago, um, uh, I came to the realization uh, that the way the world was evolving and just the desire to, again, reinvent myself, mm -hmm. um, uh, that uh, look ahead into the future and see what's likely to happen and then see if you have the skills to go do that. Uh, concurrently, my co-founder was thinking along the same lines and we said, all right, uh, analytics, especially advanced analytics, is going to be critical in, in, the, in the world, in the business world. Uh, and uh, AI uh, is going to be the key driver because Fundamentally, what AI does, or machine learning, and we use the term synonymously with each other, right. what uh, machine learning or ML does, it looks for patterns and trends in data to predict and optimize. And uh, ML does this much, much, much better than us humans. True. And so uh, the thought was uh, that uh, let's reinvent ourselves and uh, do a startup uh, and see if we can create some interesting product that could be applied uh, by the Fortune 1000, the, the market that we know well, having served the Fortune 1000 throughout our, our careers. So that was the, uh, uh, the genesis of uh, the idea and the desire to take the leap. This is six, seven years ago when, you know, AI, ML were mostly buzzwords. Today, they are more the day-to-day -day lexicon. So you were pretty much ahead of the curve in many ways. Seven years in, tell us you know, the size and scope of your operations, some of the logos, if you will, and more importantly, who's your ideal customer? All right, 
Uh, let me take each of those questions uh, one at a time. Um, so maybe in reverse, so our ideal customer, as I said, is the Fortune 1000. And why? Because uh, the more complex the customer, the better the, uh, the probability that AI ML will be able to deliver meaningful value uh, right. because uh, this is not inexpensive and it's hard. It's not easy to do. Uh, but if you're able to solve the most complex problems out there, then you know you can do the simpler problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so uh, that is our target customer. Um, and to give you a little more insight, um, we, after we had launched the company, we, uh, you know, it, it, we, we had all kinds of learnings because this is new stuff in general. It's still fairly new. Although AIML is on the agenda of every uh, CEO and every board. But uh, uh, as I said earlier, it fundamentally does a better job of uh, predicting and optimizing the outcome. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up focusing on supply chain because supply chain is a very complex uh, um, concept. Um, and uh, uh, we, we felt that if we brought a level of efficiency into the supply chain, uh, we would be able to uh, achieve a new mission. And so we said our mission is to help create a world without waste. And waste is characterized as inefficiency in the supply chain. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'll give you uh, a couple of use cases to bring it to life. So let's say you are a $10 billion consumer products uh, company, a consumer packaged goods company, CPG company. Mm -hmm. Typically, um, CPG companies who have a global supply chain will experience a lot of variability on both supply side and demand side. True. And as a result, they uh, struggle using traditional software, such as SAP and Oracle. They struggle to um, uh, fulfill the entire uh, set of orders. And so typical industry averages 90% 88 to 90% of orders get filled, which means 10 to 12% of orders are lost. And so what we have done is we have created a set of algorithms that will predict the orders that the customer is unlikely to fill over the next 12 weeks, which is called as the execution planning horizon. And uh, so if somebody has 88% um, fill rates and they're a $10 billion company, if we can use our ML applications to increase the fill rate by 1%, just 1%, that's a hundred million dollars in the top line. Huge value proposition. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you another use case, uh, which is fairly common actually in the industry. It's called predictive maintenance. That's the generic mm -hmm. term, but uh, uh, we call it asset flow. Uh, and uh, in this use case, what we do basically is ingest data from sensors mm -hmm. to predict unscheduled downtime. So if you have very expensive equipment in your production line mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it has unscheduled downtime, it's very expensive to fix, but it also uh, stops your production run and it impacts revenue. And so if you broaden this to the rest of the applications that we have, we squarely attack uh, the whole um, uh, point about uh, waste. Uh, we reduce uh, waste by increasing the efficiency of the supply chain. Uh, those are huge numbers and a lot of efficiencies to be gained over there. Yep. And, uh, you know, as you look at the the scale of these operations and, and the target market, what is the biggest challenge you are facing? Yeah, so um, I don't know if I can just say one uh, sure. challenge, which is the biggest, but uh, mm. clearly, um, convincing a customer to say, you know what, you, you're gonna to have to invest a million dollars plus on an annual basis, mm -hmm. but the uh, value you're gonna gain is gonna uh, be many times the cost, uh, convincing a, a customer or executives uh, who all feel that AI is new, unproven, and uh, yes, logically they all understand it, um, but uh, uh, the, the uh, change is significant and it's not just you know, plug in the technology and it works. You have to 
train the algorithms, mm -hmm. but you also have to train the users because it's a different way of making decisions. Mm -hmm. Today, they make decisions on supply chain by looking at data, but looking backwards. Here's what's happened. Um, and now let's make this decision. Right. Now they make decisions based on not, not just the past, but also future where AI is saying, here's what's likely to happen. So you should make this decision. And so just convincing them one customer at a time to take the leap and uh, learn from it. Because see, the, the, the main point here is, I, I always tell our customers and everybody, AI is inevitable. It is here and it is going to dramatically change the world. And we live it, we see it, we breathe it. If you look at the last 30 years, um, there has been tremendous uh, innovation that has happened, starting with the internet, the cell phone, mm -hmm. uh, cloud, software as a service, um, self-driving cars, solar solutions, uh, gene editing, space travel, you name it, right? But the next 30 years, Nathan, is going to dwarf what we have seen in the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. And this change is going to be geometric. So convincing customers, and literally every company on the planet eventually will use AI, but convincing customers to take that first step True. is our biggest challenge. It's, it's kind of getting the, that this is a paradigm shift and then adopting to it. Right. The right. change can happen. And, and you mentioned several of these milestones that we've had over the past several decades. Each of those got to a certain point where there was a, a tipping point and then the adoption came. Right. But the early adopters that have picked up on this and that you continue to inspire to make the shift are the ones that typically tend to get the first mover advantage and the biggest gains from something as earth shattering as, as this. Yes, exactly. And you, you use the term tipping point uh, really well. Um, uh, I feel that today AI is at that tipping point. Uh, we don't realize it, at least on the consumer side, that then we use AI every day. If you have this device with you, mm -hmm. uh, you, you have AI helping you yes. and you don't even know it. Um, yeah. On the enterprise side, it is coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I feel so excited about the change that we're going to witness and experience and make happen uh, because it's going to, again, fundamentally change everything we do. And it will uh, it'll help the, the planet itself because we will become more efficient uh, as a human race. And um, that's what is absolutely necessary today. You kind of read my mind I was going to ask you about the biggest opportunity, and I think you, you addressed it, but I still want to pose the question to you, if there's anything in specific that you are specifically targeting. Well, so um, uh, there are two answers to the question. As a company, our biggest opportunity, and then as an individual, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll give brief answers on both. As a company, again, uh, the more customers we get, uh, the more change we can enable uh, in the market. And that's number one. Nothing else really matters. Mm -hmm. uh, on the personal side, uh, I have had all kinds of learnings uh, in the startup space. Um, I've had the good fortune of being number one employee three times uh, when I started oh. Deloitte's um, India-based uh, practice. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the consulting business unit of Infosys, we called it Infosys Consulting. Uh, I've been point number one, both places, and now Noodle AI. And uh, just to me, my biggest opportunity is ne not necessarily for me, but to capture all the learnings and the lessons and then help other entrepreneurs uh, uh, achieve their dreams uh, is my biggest opportunity looking ahead. That's such a beautiful place to be in, right? And uh, to be able to bring all of the learning, the wisdom, uh, that knowledge and experience, and be able to use that as a platform to project forward. When you look back in the rear view mirror, is there a lesson learned or a success story that uh, you're really proud of that you would like to share with us? Um, maybe a, uh, one of both. Uh, so sure. uh, um, my, Number one lesson learned 
um, I would characterize it in the following way. Mm -hmm. Relationships absolutely matter. Yes. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, it's not easy building relationships and then sustaining them mm -hmm. because uh, uh, we humans are <laughs> complex uh, yes. entities, if I could use that term loosely. And uh, uh, in reality, very few of us are really, really good at it. Uh, but it makes such a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And so uh, to me, the biggest lesson learned um, and learning in general is uh, how to build and sustain relationships. Because when you have good relationships with other people that you have to engage with, you're able to convince them uh, of your point of view. And they are able to convince you of their point of view. And then together you do great things. True. Um, uh, with regards to a success story, I mentioned it briefly, but uh, uh, looking back, I'm really proud of the fact that I've been employed number one three times. Uh, but the, the uh, real point is not that. The real point is uh, I've been able to use that opportunity to create thousands of jobs, yes. both in the US and equally importantly, if not more, in India. And uh, that's what makes me uh, look back with a sense of pride. That's a very unique place to be in, right? To be out there on your own. There is a bit of loneliness, I would imagine, a little bit of, uh, I don't know, fear of the unknown, uh, but also that uh, maybe the pressure of responsibility to, you know, you don't know on day one that there are thousands of opportunities that are being created uh, and how this will pan out. So would love to hear uh, a little bit of you know what what it felt like and what it feels like to be in that space um it is different based on, yes. on the timing uh, you know if i look at the time continuum true i remember uh, uh, day one when i arrived in the us as a student like many of us uh, mm -hmm. uh, the fear of failure was huge yeah. um, and uh, um, that kind of drove me, but didn't drive me completely. Mm -hmm. I, I trusted my instinct and uh, judgment and uh, uh, it was fine. But when I uh, launched Deloitte's uh, India-based uh, entity, um, uh, the fear of failure was true, but more important was the desire to make it successful right. uh, because it meant so much to me. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so, um, I poured my heart and soul into it, and it was uh, it was quite successful. Today, that entity has thousands of uh, uh, mm -hmm. practitioners in Deloitte, India, and um, uh, that makes me feel good. Uh, same thing with Infosys Consulting, and uh, but you know when we launched Noodle AI, the fear of failure was gone. Yes, uh, <laughs> it was more the uh, the opportunity and the uh, the opportunity to create something new and. Uh, engage with uh, uh, leading edge technology and see you know what we could make out of it so the perspective has evolved and of course you know you're battle hardened and uh, you have thicker skin and you've got all kinds of arrows in your back and so what's one more arrow <laughs> <laughs> i think it's collectively called wisdom oh uh, you could say that <laughs> either wisdom or complete lack of wisdom <laughs> because you go do it anyway <laughs> But Raj, as, as you encapsulate all of these experiences, you know, we would love to hear some one-line life lessons from you. So we can, we can maybe get a glimpse of you know, this 30-year career, but also a lot more in terms of your own personal growth. Okay. All right. So the, the first one, I'll go in some, again, reverse order, is, sure. is about AI. Uh, to me, the one-liner is AI is inevitable, but AI is like life. <laughs> what you get out will trump what you put in. Love that. <laughs> the reason I laugh is because I was able to put the names of two world leaders in that statement. Yes. AI is like, like life. What you get out will trump all <laughs> what you put in. All. <laughs> Love that. Anyways. Um, my, my next one-liner is uh, on leadership. Mm -hmm. 
It's a little more than one liner, but uh, um, you know, succeeding as an individual is quite straightforward. You don't have to worry about anybody but yourself, right? So the variables are limited. And if you focus, you apply, you can succeed as an individual. Succeeding as a leader of a team, however, is more difficult because you have many more variables and uh, your success as a leader is dependent on the success of your teammates. But succeeding as the leader of a company is a different ball game altogether. True. Uh, many, many variables to consider. Of course, the value you create also is incrementally, geometrically higher. And then thinking of uh, others, um, uh, the one that I kind of came to realization sometime, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, <laughs> was uh, the following. The most important skill that any one of us uh, can learn and then grow is the art and science of convincing the others. Hmm. Uh, because when you think about it, uh, uh, if you're working with your computer or software or AI, it will do exactly what you ask it to do. Mm -hmm. Won't challenge you, nothing, right? But when you're dealing with another human, it's, it's, uh, it's much more challenging. And yeah. for you to convince the other party is not easy. And it's a skill which has both art and science in it. And the sooner you become better at convincing the other party, uh, you'll be a lot more successful. I really value that as a parent of children that are about to become teenagers. <laughs> indeed, indeed. It, it is, it applies not only in personal life, but professional, right? So every day you have to convince your spouse, your kids, mm -hmm. your friends, uh, your customers. Uh, True. That's how it works. Uh, one more, uh, pay it forward mm -hmm. because it will come back to you. Love and, it. Uh, and I've seen it happen to me. Uh, you, you don't, when you pay it forward, you don't really expect anything, right? And when you don't expect anything is when you'll certainly find things coming back to you. So true. Love that. Thanks so much, Raj. This has been an absolute pleasure. We really wish you all the best with continued success at Noodle. We'd love to have you back and discuss some more of these journeys and uh, some more milestones that uh, you would have achieved. Again, we really appreciate you making the time to be with us today. And thank you. Thank you, Nitin. I, I appreciate uh, you reaching out as well. And uh, thank you for the opportunity. Pleasure is all ours. Thanks so much, Raj.